What's up everyone, 6 here, and today I'm going to provide a full beginner's guide on shot shaping in PJ Tour 2K23, and I'm going to talk about how to do it, what it does, how to add draw and fade on the ball, how to spin the ball, but also how you can control your distances and understand shot shaping a little bit more. So that is the go today. I have multiple guides on this channel and tutorials. You can check the full playlist in the description. You may find what you're looking for there. If you need some more help, I have a full ultimate beginner's guide too that I recommend anybody who's struggling in this game. I highly recommend you check that out, but let's get on, on with the video. If you get some enjoyment, drop a like, subscribe for more, and here we go. So the best place to practice shot shaping and really anything in this game is the training facility you can find it in the casual tab of the main menu you just click on training it takes you straight into the driving range here so in this game you can shot shape your shots with draw fade loft d loft and backspin and front spin i don't really call it front spin i call it basically decreased backspin it's I mean, you could put front spin on it but uh depending on what your shot shaping stats are so to shot shape on this game if we take a look at the right side of the screen here where my cursor cursor is cir circling around there if i hold down L left bumper on the controller on xbox l1 on playstation and i'm not sure what it is on mouse and keyboard i never play on mouse and keyboard uh, but it's going to pull up the shot shaping menu to the right. So we have two different functions. You have the left stick that you can move down. You can move up. You can see it moving on the right side of the screen there. And I can move the left stick left and right. And each time you do it, do you see the blue marker? That on pro difficulty setting, which is what I am for the purposes of this video, you can actually see what the effect that shot shaping is having on the ball where it, what's its flight path and also you can see its distance changes so when you de loft and loft it's going to change distances and i'll get more into that later and then we have the right stick the right stick you can only move down and up so for the purposes of this video and i think the easiest way to think of shot shaping the different functions of the left stick and right stick i think of the left stick as the the fade fade is if you move the shot shaping to the left you can see that that l that circle with an l l on it right here as i move it to the left i'm fading the ball the ball is we're generating side spin and we're fading the ball from left to right from the golfer's position if i move it the other way we are going to draw it so we're moving it right to left more towards the golfer position or a pull so we're adding side spin to the ball. And a lot of people consider this, when it, so that's draw and fade, right? If I move the left stick down, I'm adding loft to the driver or any club in the back. This has a different effect on each club and we will go over that. But for just this beginning intro purposes, you add down, you're actually lofting the cl club. Don't think of it as spin, as backspin. Because look at how it's changing the flight path. So if I if I go all the way down, this driver, we're adding a little bit of distance on it. You can see it's supposed to fly 282. We're adding a little bit of distance by moving it the, the loft all the way down. So we're basically flying the ball. The ball is being sit higher on a higher flight. Now, if we take a look at a pitching wedge, when I loft it, we really increase its flight. So it's being shot up in the air and also we're taking off distance. And you can use this to hone in your distances. So think of the left LB shot shaping left stick function. When you move it down, you are lofting the club to take off distance. You're gonna naturally add spin to the ball, but this is not how you generate a lot of spin. You can generate spin with it by changing this. And then you can deloft. If I deloft a pitching wedge, it is going to add distance. So certain clubs in the game will add distance on a D loft, and you can again use that for distance control. I'm going to talk about more about that later as we get to it. So think of left stick. Left is fade. Right is draw. Down is loft. 
up is DLoft. And you can move it anywhere. Now keep in mind, what's important to know, look at the shot feedback at the right side of the screen. This top region is your tempo feedback. Your tempo feedback, the gray region is a good shot. The perfect region, the white region is a perfect shot. And then you have your swing plane meter right down here. So the swing plane meter, you have the gray region, which is good. The white region, which is perfect, right? Now, as you increase your difficulty, that those are going to be smaller. And if you have a lower shot shaping stat, so this game does have stats and archetypes. So if you have a low shot shaping stat, it's going to not only affect how much you can draw and fade and spin the ball, but look what happens when I add shot shaping. Any of it, especially ultra. If I had if I had full loft and full fade, look how small the perfect region gets and the gray region. So every there's a risk reward every time you manipulate shot shaping, whether it's the left stick or the right stick, you are further making the perfect tempo and perfect swing plane harder. Now, if you had the sculptor archetype if you're into shot shaping a lot the sculptor archetype might be the one for you because you're going to get less of a pen penalty you're going to be able to draw and fade the ball more and you're going to be able to generate more spin with shot shaping so the sculptor might be the way i still think the rhythm loadout and arc the rhythm archetype is the best one in the game for hitting that perfect tempo and also has good swing path so that's left stick right we talked about left stick but let's move to the right stick. So right stick is changing. Think of this as your spin stick. When you change the right stick, yes, you're changing flight as well. You can see it. It's lofting the club. It's changing flight, but in a different mechanic to the, the left stick. So the right stick, when I, with the driver, I can, with the driver, woods, or hybrids, when you move the right stick down, you're generating more spin, but you're also adding distance to the shot. You can increase your drive distance by 10 yards. You can see my base distance is 282. I can hit this thing 292 if with full loft or full spin. I, you, can, you can consider whatever you want to call it, but just know the function. Just know the function. I like to think of the right stick as spin. That helps because that's what it generates mostly when you're on the green, on the fairway. It's going to stick more. When you move it the other way, look what it's going to do. It's gonna, it, it is going to take off distance, and it does change. You are decreasing the distance like the loft meter. So, But I don't like to think it's the right stick as loft because I, even though I, it, 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 in a way it is, right? But... This does not have the primary spin function. So you can add distance with the right stick with, with driver, three wood, five wood, three hybrid. You can see you're just as you go down to the hybrids, you're gonna only gain a few yards out of this. A few yards, four hybrid, four iron, you can gain a few yards, five iron, you gain three yards total. You gain two yards total on a six iron, and then seven iron, you gain this is when you gain nothing. Seven all the way down. The changing the spin or attacking angle is only basically going to generate spin and also allow you to hit the ball higher, especially when you combine it with the left stick. So once you get to the seven iron, you can lo no longer use the right stick for distance control as far as moving the right stick down. You can use it for spin. You can decrease distance a little bit if you change the attacking angle and put a little more top spin on it or de I, I like to think of it as decreased backspin it's hard to get a full top spin on it but what you can do at this point we're at a seven iron what i can do to control distance let's go down to the seven iron i can move the left stick to change my loft and put some loft on it and decrease my distance so say you're in between clubs for example we're between the four hybrid and four iron, right? So one way I could do this, I could hit a partial shot. That's one way I could do it. Or I can loft the four hybrid. There is a penalty for that because it makes the shot harder to hit. But it's a way you can start dialing in your distances. You have much more control as you move down to the irons and especially the wedges at being in between clubs. The reason I don't carry an eight iron or nine iron is because I have an 8-iron and pitching wedge. 
the gap, if I want to hit into the 48 range, all I have to do is loft the 8 iron all the, almost all the way, and I'm between. Right? So when you're learning this, that's what's important of having the... Uh, when you're playing on pro, or even when you're just learning these mechanics, even if you play on a higher difficulty normally, turn on pro vision true shot and pro vision trajectory aim. That way you can actually see what effect, when you're changing the shot shaping, what effect it has on the ball. So, now you know how to draw fade, how to loft, how to de-loft, how to change spin on the, how to, how to really add spin. Yeah, it's adding loft as well with the right stick, but I think it's easiest to understand as spin. Okay, so let's, let's actually take a look at how spin can, how, how the shot shaping can be used and what different effects it has on the green surface. So we're going to take, let's take a sand wedge here into this green. I turned off tempo for the purposes of just showing you the spin so that we can get the perfect tempo every time. So we're just going to hit this sand wedge onto the green, normal, everything, nothing changed, no shot shaping. So there we go. We hit our swing and we're going to pay attention to the way it hits and the rollout. So you hit, rolls out a few yards, and then stops. So now we're gonna hit the same exact club. The only thing we're gonna change is shot shaping the right stick, what I call spin, right? Some people call this loft. Uh, I like to think of it as spin. So I'm gonna do full backspin here, right stick all the way back and then hit it. Here we go, we're basically hitting the same exact shot with full backspin. We're gonna take a look at the spin. It stopped, rode less, how can we further add spin though? So for example, say, I mean, this we're hitting into a downhill slope here, right? We're hitting into a downhill slope. I want to even catch it with a little bit more spin. I can use the left stick to take off a little bit of distance, but the left stick will also inherently add some spin as well. So let's go ahead, take the shot. Added a little loft and we have full right side, the right stick all the way down. Look how much more spin I generated on that golf shot. So you can really use this to manipulate and stick things on the green, especially on firm and fast green speeds. You can also hone in your distance control. So for example, let's say we have a lob wedge and sand wedge here. Say I don't want to hit a partial distance shot, but say I want to land it around in this area here, so 105. What would I need to do? Well, all I need to do is add some shot shaping to it. Let's add some some spin on it or some loft. Let's change the loft and loft in the air to, to about 105. And we're not going to change the spin. We're just going to, we're not going to mess with the spin this time. We're just going to send it. Good swing. A little bit under swung. So we're going to be a little bit shorter we wanted to. 104. And then generated some nice natural spin on it, right? But say I wanted a little bit more spin. I can move the right stick down to match the left stick or even more. And let's watch how the ball, let's watch what the ball does now. So 80, this is basically the same swing, 98%. It was 97 the last one. Hits, and look at that spin we generate. So that is how you can really start to combine the left stick and right stick shot shaping to really generate the spin you want. One alone does not have a huge spin effect, right? But you start combining them. Yes, you're going to take off distance when you move the left stick, especially on, so from a lob wedge, sand wedge, gap wedge, pitching wedge, eight iron, seven iron. You can take off distance with the left stick. Now, as we move into the six iron, it's going to change a little bit, right? It's going to start to slacken a little bit. Five iron, you can take off a little bit as well. Six, I mean, five iron, four iron, you can take off a little bit more. You have less of an effect, but as you get into the hybrids, you can all, I mean, you can take off distance, but look, only a few yards, only a few yards. And then you start adding distance with woods and driver. You start adding distance here. So that is how the left stick shot shaping changes distances and how you can use it for distance control but again 
don't be messing too much around with shot shaping unless you can actually hit good tempo and hit good swing plane. Swing plane is really punishing in this game. Tempo is not as punishing if you're in the gray area. If you're outside of that, it's really punishing, especially when you do shot shaping. Now, draw and fade. You can actually, with draw and fade, take off distance as well into a green. Uh, so, for example, uh, let's, let's hit a hybrid here into this green. And let's put a little bit of fade in it. Let's put a little bit of fade. We're going to take off about one distance here, right? Just adding a little bit of fade, hitting LB, moving the left stick to the left. And let's add a little bit of, let's change our attacking angle a little bit. So we're getting more distance. So to counteract that, what am I going to do? Move the left stick back a little bit. So I want 218 is what I want to fly. So look at the right side of the screen. I have backspin, I have fade, and I have loft all combined in one shot. And let's hit this shot into the green and watch it. Beautiful fade. You know, it's much easier with tempo turned off, but you, you can't see the mechanics if I tempo on. Beautiful, right? So you can combine draw and fade, loft, D loft to your advantage. Now, one thing I did not talk about was I talked about how to be in between clubs on loft, right? So let's go back to this green here. Let's go to this middle green. And say I need to hit it somewhere between 168 and 157. Let's go 162. There's two ways I can do that. We can do what I just talked about. Loft until we get to 162. A little bit of loft. Or what we can actually do is change to the 8 iron. So we're going to change to the 8 iron here. And then we're going to add D loft. We can de-loft the ball as well to add distance. This is going to decrease the spin and it's going to increase the row, the forward row you're going to get it. I would recommend the other method, but this is just another way you can do it. If you need a little bit more roll out of the ball, you need a little more flight, you can do that as well. So that is another mechanic you can do. I don't use that one as often. I'll put a touch of de-loft sometimes and a touch of... I'll, I'll, I'll do a touch. So if we take a look at this, when I do it, I'll do it to add just a touch of left stick forward and right stick forward if I want a little bit extra roll up a hill. So I will do it very rarely. So I would not recommend doing that one too much. There, there's some cases you could do it. Let me know. What do you all use the shot shaping for mostly? Do you use it for to decrease distance in between clubs? Use it to generate spin? What do you use it for? But there you have it, everybody. A good full overview of shot shaping in this game and how you can use it mostly draw and fade use it when you need to use it when a fairway is dog leg to the right or dog leg to the left draw or fade i don't draw and fade a lot into the greens some people do it all the time i usually draw and fade when i have to there's trees in the way and i need to hit it around the trees that's when i would use the draw and fade i mostly use shot shaping for distance control loft de loft and also generating more spin i usually combine left stick and right stick for a little bit more spin on the ball that's the way i do it you can you do any do whatever works for you but let me know what you like to do with shot shaping in this game and if i missed anything you have any questions let me know down in the comment below i appreciate you all watching this video to the end if you got some enjoyment drop a like subscribe if you want to see more plenty more videos coming on the channel for you on this game you can check out the full gameplay tutorial playlist in the description drop a like if you got some enjoyment subscribe for more i will see you next time as always, have a fantastic day, everybody.